friends. Thank you for clicking on this tutorial. Um, we are going to make these beautiful scrubber cloths. Now, I um, I love them. I think they're beautiful. I know just who's going to get them to. <laughs> but anyways, I um, used my six millimeter J-hook. We're going to use loops and threads, everyday cotton, cotton in the color Patriot Ombre. We are going to use loops and threads, squeaky clean, and... Red Heart, scrubble, Scrubby, Sparkle, Yarn, and White. Those three things, I hardly touched any of this, of course. And this one, I bought two balls like this. They are 95 yards, two ounces. And uh, this is how much I have left after two. Like, I could make a third one. I'm convinced I could make a third one. So, very cost effective. Go get, grab yourself some. But look at the patterning. I love it. They look like squares. Like, who knew that this was going to turn out like this? Like, I just, I love how it's patterned. This one in particular, but both of them. Um, so it's beautiful, beautiful cotton yarn. I just love it. Now, these are great because they're mostly a cotton cloth, but you have a little hint of scrubber yarn in there. So, you know, if you're scrubbing something that needs a little extra help, you just got to take this little scrubby section and scrub it off. And then you've got the rest to wash your dishes. So it's, it's a two in one. I love it. Um, and you know what, if when you're wiping your counters, you might say, well, this isn't gonna, this scrubby part's not going to pick up the, um, the crumbs and stuff. It's going to just fall off. And you're, you're right. So you just got to, you know, maneuver it and just get the cotton part on there and pick it up beautiful or just use this for washing your dishes it's so perfect great for that little extra scrub on your stove too if you need to to clean the top of your stove without a scratch um cloth so this is without scratching your surface so these are beautiful i just i'm in love with them i just you know i i was thinking what can i do differently i gotta do something different different in a dishcloth and this is what i came up with and i hope that you enjoy it um i hope that this pattern gets out there share it wherever you can and get it out there and let's uh let's make this a new thing <laughs> instead of a separate scrubby and a separate cloth now we have a two-in-one scrubby cloth and that's what i'm going to call them a scrubby cloth all right friends thank you so much for joining me please don't forget to hit that thumbs up please, please, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, I really appreciate you doing both of those things, and I appreciate you sharing my patterns across Facebook in the different groups. It means a lot to me when you help support me that way and, and get the word out. So friends, here we go. Two beautiful, beautiful dishcloths. I love scrubby cloths. I love them. So grab your supplies, and let's uh, get right into it. All right, friends, we're ready to go. I have put my camera at a different angle. I'm going to see how this works um, rather than how I usually have it. And we're going to give it a go. <laughs> Tell me in the comments if it's a good angle for you. Okay. We're going to take our yarn tail. We're going to make a slip knot around the finger, just like that. Lift up the loop, put it on your hook. This is how I make my slip knots. There's many ways, as we all know, to do that. So you just do whatever works good for you. I've got my six millimeter hook. This is my J hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull it through that loop. Then I'm going to take that loop all the way up to this round part here because that's I want all my stitches to be that width, okay? So this is the widest part of the hook here. That's one and two, three. It's a natural thing. It just automatically, when you go up to reach the yarn, it goes up to there. So, But we just want to make sure because when I, I have a friend that quite a few years ago, I taught her how to crochet. And her stitches were so tight she could hardly get into them. And that's because she was going like this and then struggling to get it through. You have to take it all the way up to there, okay? And we're going to go through. And we're going to chain 33, okay? I've lost count. I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to count them again. But you're going to just keep going like this. After every few stitches, you can move your thumb and your finger up and crochet till you get 33 stitches. I'm probably almost there, so I'm going to stop and count. <laughs> I was at 29. Okay, so 30, 31, 32, and 33. Now what we're going to do is we're going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. We do not count this one on the hook. We count one, two, three, four. And in that little stitch, you'll see that there are three bars. You're going to go between the top two. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pick up that one that top uh, loop. I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, then I'm going to pull up on my hook, just give it a twist and pull up so that all three of these bars are the same length, same in distance and height. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And again, the more you crochet, the more that just comes, that's a normal thing to do and you don't even have to think about it, okay? Yarn over, pull up, go through two, go through two. Yarn over, go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, go through two, and yarn over, go through two. Let's do that again, double crochet, yarn over, go through the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And this is what it's going to look like. And we're going to do that all the way down the row. Yarn over, go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. I realize I'm talking fast because this isn't a teaching video on how to do stitches. <laughs> this is a, a video on how to do the dishcloth, okay? Um, if you want to have this double crochet done in a slower way and I just focus on the double crochet, please go to my playlist on my channel. Um, go to the crochet playlist and I will teach you how to do lots of different stitches, okay? And that will help you in your um, crochet journey if you're new. Glad, uh, I will be glad to help you learn that. But this is how you do it. Maybe you just want to rewind this video a little bit and go over that. Slow it down up in that top right corner of the video. You can hit that gear and slow it down and watch it again and learn that way too. All right, friends. So keep going until you get to the very last one and I'll see you back. All right, so I have double crocheted into that last chain there. I've gone and taken a stitch marker, which is my bobby pins, and you're going to put it in that third chain from the bottom here, okay? So this is, look, check out this loop where, where this double crochet is in, and then count one, two, three. And that's where you're going to put your stitch marker, okay? And we're going to just leave that in there just so we know to go into that third chain when we get to the other side. But from here... We are going to chain up two, one, two, and then we're going to turn our work. This is where our patterning begins. And it's so fun. If you haven't done front post and back post double crochets, now's the time to learn. It's a lot of fun, not hard. Okay, so this is our turning chain. We're not counting that. We're going to go into this one here, this very next one. Yarn over, in between, behind. Hold, hold this base of this stitch here with your two fingers. Yarn over, come up, yarn over, go through two yarn over and go through two. That's a front post double crochet. Next one's going to be a back post. Yarn over, go in the back and come up through the side there. Go over the front into that side of that next two stitches. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. Back post double crochet. We're going to do a front post double crochet. Yarn over, Go in between from the front, go behind and come back out at the front. Yarn over, bring it through. It's actually not hard. Once you get the first few done and you got a little bit of extra um, project to hold on to, it becomes easier. Okay, yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. So we've done a front post, a back post, a front post, and we're gonna do a back post. Yarn over, you're gonna go in from the back. So it just makes sense. Go in from the back, go over that stitch and come back to the back. Yarn over, bring it through, pull up, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Now we've done front, back, front, back. We're gonna keep alternating. Yarn over, we're gonna do a front post double crochet. Yarn over, you're gonna do a back post double crochet. Take that next stitch, front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. So then you're coming in from the back, around that stitch, grabbing the yarn, coming out, going through two and going through two. That's a back post. Now we're gonna do a front post, just like that. See how pretty that is? It's just beautiful. It gives such a nice texture. You're gonna keep rotating or alternating front post, back post, front post, back post, front post, back post, all the way to the end and when I get close to the end I'll come back and see you. Here's how we're looking. I've just done a front post so I'm going to do a back post and then I'm going to tell you something. Back post. There we go. You might think well do I continue on? Do I continue on? Yes you do because we start with a front post 
and we end with a front post double crochet. So if you if you get confused, do I keep going? Um, you see these, this is your chaining, um, your turning chain right there, and this is the last double crochet we're gonna go into. It works out that it's a front post, and if it doesn't work out to a front post, then you've missed something along the way, okay? So I've done front post, back post, front post, back post, all the way down, and I have one left, this turning chain. In that turning chain, and, and trust me, Use, use a stitch marker if you're not sure how to find it. Um, you'll be much happier if you do. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go into the top of that chain where my stitch marker is, that's the third chain, and I'm going to double crochet. I can now take this little guy out. I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then take your stitch marker and pop it into that top of that chain two, just like this. Okay. Because from now on, that's where you're going to put it, in the top of the chain twos. Then you're going to turn your work. And you will see that if this is the front post, when you look at it from the other side, it looks like a back post. And that's what you want. We're going to always begin with a front post. So that one that's, that's inset is the one that you're going to start in. So yarn over, front post, double crochet. And this one is predominant to the front, you're gonna back post. And you are going to count those all the way down, alternating front post, back post, front post, back post, and you'll do it 29 times. You have you start with a front post, you end with a front post, and you've done it 29 times um, in your rotation. We don't count this turning chain, okay? So I'm going to keep going, this is row three. We're going to do four rows of this. So when I get to the end, um, I will come back and we'll do the turn again together. Uh, this one right here, oops, there's my there's my st stitch marker. This one here, I didn't put a stitch marker in. Why did I not put a stitch marker in there? Okay, so let me see. Let me find that for you. So if you turn it this way, it's easier to see. One, two. When you look at your at your front post here, this stitch right up at the top here belongs to this front post. So go down to this next one right here. That's where you're going to put your stitch marker. Okay. Now, every time you, you, it's just to start it. When you start your project, you have to find where those stitches are. But now every time we get to the end of the row, we'll mark it. Okay. So I did a front back. I'm going to do a front. And I know if that stitch looks like it's set in the back, that that means that I have to do a front post on that one. If it's predominantly in the front, that means I'm doing a back post. Double crochet. I'm going to now do a front post double crochet and a back post. And friends, I will continue that till I get to the end. And when I get to the end, I'll see you back. I'm at the end of the row. I'm going to do a back post double crochet on this next one. And I know I always start and end my row with a front post. So I got to find that little one that's hidden in there. There it is right there. So I'm going to do a front post double crochet. And now I know I'm at the end. I've got my last front post double crochet Then I'm going to lift up on my stitch marker so I can get into that second chain there. Then I can take it out. Double crochet. Chain two, one, two. Take that stitch marker, pop that into that second chain, turn my work. If you don't want this clanging on the table, just pop it down into the work like that. <laughs> and then we're going to do one more row. We've done three rows. We're going to do the fourth row. So I'm going to yarn over. This is my first bar right there. I'm going to front post. And into the next one, back post. I'm going to continue that all the way across again till I get to the end. And then we are going to add our scrubby yarn. So go ahead, finish your fourth row and see me back. Coming up on the end here. I had to rip it back a row because I realized I put three front double crochet in a row. Um, I missed the back double crochet. So I ripped it back and uh, fixed that little problem. And now we're going to end this fourth row with a front post double crochet and then a double crochet into that chain two. 
take that out except we're not going to finish the double crochet let's watch what i do here we're going to go into that stitch we're going to pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then we're going to take our scrubby yarn so in this last two two um let me get this over here in the last two loops what we're going to do is we're going to hold this yarn tail down just like that i'm going to grab this one i'm going to hold that tail down together with it then i'm going to switch it and put this third finger over top yarn over and pull that through those last two loops okay then i'm going to just take this down here and i'm going to just pull on these to tighten them i'm going to tie them in a bit in a minute but i just wanted to pull them closer okay now we're going to chain two one and two take your little stitch marker and stick it in that second stitch turn your work like a book now i'm using white as you can see um, with this particular one my first one i used the red and I love it, but I had white. So I thought, let's do the second one in white. We're going to just do the same thing. Now that we've joined it, we're going to find that first crochet that's right there. It was front post on the other side. Looks like a back post from this side. And we're going to front post double crochet. And then we're going to back post double crochet. Friends, we're going to follow this same pattern, just exactly what you're doing. Except for it's far from my body, so because <laughs> I'm reaching to do this to get it in a good angle on the camera. So let's try that again. You're going to keep doing this, following the same pattern. Front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet, front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet. Then you're going to get to the end of the row. You're going to do a double crochet in the top of the chain two. Then you're going to chain two and turn your work and you're going to do a second row of scrubby yarn. Okay. And when I get to the end of this row, I'll come back in and see you because it's a, it's a little tricky to see the loops of the scrubby yarn, but it's not impossible and you can feel it with your fingers. Here we go. See, once you get past the first couple, it's easier to hold. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Okay. So I am going to make it to the end of this row. And then I will come back on and we will um, do the second row, start the second row together. All right, coming up on the end. Don't be confused by this little lump there. It's not one stitch because I just did a back post and we always end on a front post. So you know that you can separate this to find that last one that's hiding there you're going to do a front post double crochet then you're going to take that stitch marker i tucked it in because it was scraping on the scraping on my table and making noise you're going to go ahead yarn over double crochet into that stitch you can take that stitch marker right on out of there And you're going to chain two and turn your work pop your stitch marker into that second chain and we're going to continue now this one it's easy to see these little um, cords underneath all this sparkly stuff um, if you look carefully. On the, on the red one, it's a little bit harder to see, but it's very easy to feel it with your finger. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go behind that one like that and do a front post double crochet. Yarn over. Do a back post double crochet. You see, you can see them very easily. But again, if you're using a darker one, you just it's so easy to feel with your finger. So it's not hard at all. I'm going to work my front post double crochet and my back post double crochet alternating all the way down to the end and when I get there I'll meet you one more time and we will do another yarn change and tie off our ends and then I'll give you more instructions from there
Coming up to the end of my second row, I'm going to find that stitch marker. I'm going to see where that little loop is, pop it in there, double crochet, leaving the last two loops on my hook. Then I'm going to cut this. I'm going to hold it in the back. I'm going to grab my yarn, my cotton yarn. I'm going to hold that and then I'm going to prepare my fingers and switch it and hold it with my third finger. Yarn over, bring it, bring it through those last two loops to complete that stitch. Chain two. Pop this stitch marker. Oops, that's the wrong one. Where's the other one? Must have dropped it. Pop the stitch marker in the second chain um, so that you know where it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up on this just a little bit because I, oh, there it is. Tying there. I didn't take it out. There we go. I like to tie off my ends at this point. I'm going to give that a tie and then another one. I'm going to pop this on my needle. I'm going to do thing, the same to the other side and I'm going to just wind this down through through my work till I can get to one of these cotton stitches. Pull that out and then I'm going to just weave this into here. I like to weave the same color into the same color but I'm not able to reach this all the way down to the, to the blue so I'm just going to go like this. Pull it through. It's nice and hidden. It's pretty short, but I'm going to then take my needle, go back like that. These are metal wool needles. I get them from Amazon or Walmart, either of those two places where I find them. Okay. And they come in a package with three different sizes and I love them. Use them in all my videos. There we go. Cut that off. I'm going to hide that a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead, hide this other tail here. Then I'm going to hide any of the other ones that I need to hide. You can wait till the end of your project if you want. Um, but for me, I'm going to tie these two off as well. Go ahead and hide them. I don't like to work around tails that are dragging all over the place. So I will do some of my projects, if it's this or no matter what it is, and then when I get a certain amount of tails done, I will hide them and then keep going with my work. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to knock this one off. I'm going to hide it as well. And then now that we've prepared this one, we've done our chain two, we are going to turn our work and we are going to knit eight more rows. Okay. So eight rows of this plain color, well, this variegated color, but of this cotton is what I should say. I've done my chain two. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go around that first post there with a front post double crochet. Yarn over. Go behind and in front and behind. Do a back post double crochet. I'm going to follow that all across my row. I'm going to chain two. Well, I'm going to do a double crochet into where my stitch marker is. Then I'm going to chain two, turn my work, and we're going to continue that process till we do eight more rows. So we have four and two and eight. Okay, that's a total of 14 rows. Go ahead and continue in the same patterning until you have eight more rows of your cotton yarn done. And uh, when you when you're at that place, I'll finish off with you. I'm at the end. I've got my back post double crocheted on there. So I have to end with my front post. And then double crochet into the top, chain two of that stitch, of that chain, okay? The second chain, the second stitch of that chain. <laughs> you know what you're doing, you've done it many times already. Yarn over, pull it through, cut it off, push down that little knot, and then you're going to hide your work. This is how much is left. I don't know if you can really tell, but in my second ball. So I made two of these. I think you could get a third out of it. I really think you could get a third um, dishcloth out of two balls of cotton, but aren't those pretty? Wouldn't that make just a pretty gift? Let me just uh, fix the end here by hiding the tail, and I'll be right back. There we have it. 
Aren't they beautiful? So, you know, if, if you want to pick um, some crumbs up from your counter and, and it doesn't work with this little scrubby thing, you just fold that on the inside and then you can just pick it up nicely with just the cotton. Um, and if you need that little extra scrub action, you've got it there. Uh, just such a pretty dishcloth, okay? So I measured it and it's nine by about eight, nine, nine by eight and a little bit. Uh, so it's a really, really nice size for you. Now a way to, to patch them if you were going to give them as a gift, take that one end, fold it over, take that one end, meet it in the middle and fold it up. I'm gonna do that with this one as well. Into the middle, into the middle and fold it up. Pop those beside each other just like that. Tie a little um, jute around there, or I print off labels. I actually don't have one to do to show you right now, but I print off labels, and I put uh, crocheted with love or whatever label you want on there, and just put that over the top here. And how pretty is that? Okay, so you can sell these and just. Um, sets of two. You don't need to add a third one. I always used to sell my, I don't uh, sell my, many anymore because I'm not promoting them, but I used to sell um, dishcloths in sets of three and I would put the wrapper around them and I would sell them that way. And I would have a plain one in the middle. Um, but these are beautiful just like that. They look Christmassy, but really they're not. They're for any, I mean, they can be, <laughs> but they're for any time. But grab your favorite color of cotton. You can use a solid color. You don't have to use variegated and grab a matching scrubby yarn and um, make yourself some of these. You won't regret it. They're very fun and they're beautiful. Okay, I'm going to uh, give these away to a certain person that I have in my mind and I'm going to wrap them up and just give them to her as a friendship gift. I hope she likes them. All right, friends, thanks again for joining me. I hope uh, that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please show me your um, scrubby cloths in my Facebook group, or if you're in other groups, show them in that group, as, in those groups as well. And please add the link um, to, to whatever you... Um, show in different groups, please add the link. It would be, it would help me a lot if you would do that. And I'm asking one more thing that if someone, if you make one of these and you post it and someone says, oh, what are the row counts? Please do not share row counts. Please share the link. Um, I'm gonna, gonna say that in a few of my videos from now on because it's becoming a, a problem. People are sharing row counts rather than sharing the links. And it really is disheartening because we take so much time as creators to make these videos. Um, and when people share row counts, it's, it's very disheartening. So please don't do that. <laughs> I'd appreciate it very much if you would just share the link rather than sharing row counts. So thanks again, friends, for joining me. Um, I really enjoyed spending this time with you. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and we'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a blessed day.